Oh my god, you guys are probably so excited because I've been telling you that Aphorism 16 is especially interesting and just lovely. So I'm sure, you know, with the way you guys hang on every recommendation and word that, that I... Anyway, it's really quite nice. Um, it, uh, it, it, I, if I recall, I hope I didn't get the number wrong um, because I forgot to preview and double check before doing this. Um, but I believe it has to do a little bit with uh, Descartes' cogito. I think, therefore, I am. And how it's not quite as obvious as Descartes made out and how there's errors in Descartes' assumptions. Really? Because this is something we can all get a little bit tangible. Like, I'm doubting everything, I'm doubting everything. Oh, wait, I know, I think, therefore, I am. Well, Nietzsche says, really? Hold on, not so quick. Aphorism 16 of Beyond Good and Evil, a prelude to... A philosophy of the future. All right. There are still harmless self-observers who believe that there are immediate certainties. For example, I think. Or as the superstition of Schopenhauer put it, I will. Or as I put it, I, Piero, um, I, uh, perception happens. Okay, but anyway. Uh, semicolon shouldn't have stopped there. As though knowledge here got hold of its object purely and nakedly as, quote, the thing in itself without any falsification on the part of either the subject or the object. But that immediate certainty as well as absolute knowledge and the thing in itself involve a contradictio in adjecto, which means contradiction in terms, I shall repeat a hundred times, we really ought to free ourselves from the seduction of words. Immediate certainty. Absolute knowledge and the thing in itself involve contradiction in terms. Isn't that great? <laughs> you could think about that a lot and it won't be a waste of time. Immediate certainty is a contradiction in terms. Because <laughs> certainties are not immediate. Absolute knowledge. Absolute contradicts the idea of knowledge. It's not a requirement of knowledge. It's a contradiction to knowledge. No knowledge is absolute. Thing in itself. <laughs> it's a thing in your mind. Nietzsche was... He, he, he saw forward into a much more modern sensibility. He talks a lot about these things, and it's, it's, it's clear. On the other hand, you know... He was a flawed individual like us all, and there's no way you're going to go, well, Nietzsche said it, so it must be good. There's no authority in Nietzsche. But if he says something that's like, ah, oh, yeah, that pieces together on its own, then it pieces together on its own. And, and this is a perfect example, this critique and the other uh, critiques on the cogito. All right. Uh, because I was always so into the cogito and how, yeah, somehow that's fundamental. And then for Nietzsche, he said, no, that's not fundamental. That's no, that's like, you haven't even gotten to the, to the table of elements yet. Okay. And then, of course, the, the elements are not elemental either. Okay. Not to speak confusingly, but... Uh. Okay. Let the people suppose... That knowledge means knowing things entirely. The philosopher must say to himself, when I analyze the process that is expressed in the sentence, I think, I find a whole series of daring assertions that would be difficult, perhaps impossible, to prove. For example, that it is I who think, that there must be necessarily something that thinks. That thinking is an activity, an operation on the part of a being who is thought of as a cause. That there is an ego. And finally, that it is already determined what is to be de designated by thinking. That is, that I know what thinking is. So, like, in this one sentence, he, he's broken down a bunch of assumptions that, that when I read this, and I think it was the first time, but it might have, whenever I finally went, huh? It was like, oh yeah, there are all of these 
assumptions involved that I think therefore I am is far from the most fundamental. It's not the most fundamental, you know, the, the physics of cognition that we could figure out, far from it, right? Because we're assuming all sorts of things about will and, and various things that even we as, as YouTube discussioners of, of philosophy and philosophical issues, we gather there's there's more views to this, like I think. No, just that you, and, and what clicked with me at the time was that, yeah, I mean, if you believe that I am the result of the processing of the brain, then to say I think is, is sort of like probably not the way you want are going to want to put it, right? If you're right about your intuition in this, it's going to be that the brain thinks me, right? What does think mean? You know, sure, if think means, well, my experience of learning what the brain did, but if think means doing that, it leads to you and your experiences. Now, I don't know what that all means, but it goes in line with, wait a second, let, we can't actually assume I think, therefore I am. I don't know that I'm the one thinking. I, I, I think might be the subject. Something thinks me. I just found that very, uh, uh, you know, effective. It, it, it changed the way I think about a lot of things, even other subjects that aren't this one. It's like a little clue on how to break an assumption into its pieces. And you find that you can always do that. And not just in trivial ways, but in ways that are like substantive. It's not just saying, do I really know if I think I don't know that? No, it's like, yeah, look, take what you know and you can conclude something like your brain is the result of thought, which if the anti... Uh, willpower people that believe in determinism, that's what they think, and that's a, a perfectly legitimate part of what they think. We are the result of thinking. We're not the cause of it, but the result. Wow. Can Something that some people took as immediate truths about causal relationships, which was the cause and which was the result, it might be inverted. The cause might, might be the result, the result the cause. I find that interesting. So I'm assuming that I know what thinking is. For if I had not already decided within myself what it is, by what standard could I determine whether that which is just happening is not perhaps willing or feeling? In short, the assertion, I think, assumes that I compare my state at the present moment with other states of myself which I know in order to determine what it is on account of this retrospective connection with further knowledge. It has, at any rate, no immediate certainty for me. In place of the immediate certainty in which the people may believe, in the case at hand, the philosopher thus finds a series of metaphysical questions presented to him, truly searching questions of the intellect. And again, when he says philosopher, he, in this context, he's talking about we, whose job it is to remain wakeful. Okay. To wit, from where do I get the concept of thinking? Why do I believe in cause and effect? What gives me the right to speak of an ego and even of an ego as cause and finally of an ego as the cause of thought? Why do I believe in cause and effect? What is cause and effect? Most people I argue with con often, most people assume that cause and effect is not even a theory, it's not even an option, it's not even an idea, it's a thing that is absolutely itself. It has to be true. And if you say, well, what is it? It's like describing it. They don't. It doesn't cohere with physics or anything else. It's this concept that they do not have a clear idea None of us actually have a very clear idea because though we thought in Newtonian times we did, in the quantum mechanical times we found out, oh, wait a second, not so quick. And yet so many people assume it as an immediate certainty. Why do I believe in cause and effect? And I would add, and what does it mean? It ought to be possible to say. 
but if you do say, you'll find some interesting things about it. What gives me the right to speak of an ego, and even of an ego as a cause, and finally as cause of thought? Whoever ventures to answer these metaphysical questions at once by an appeal to a sort of intuitive perception, like the person who says, quote, I think and know that this at least is true, actual and certain, end quote, will encounter a smile and two question marks from a philosopher nowadays, we. Sir, the philosopher will perhaps give him to understand, it is improbable that you are not mistaken, but why insist on the truth? To which he alludes to some previous aphorisms. Cheers. <laughs>